Duck season is here. I know you're fired up about it, right? But what kind of game call are you using? There's a pretty decent chance it may be a Haydale game call made right here in Northwest Louisiana. We got the story this week about Haydale game calls. The sights and sounds directly from Rod and Kelly. Let's go ahead and take a look. I guess it was about 1981. Uh, I was just graduating high school. Uh, Dad actually wanted to see if he could make a duck call, so he put together a little mold, and matter of fact, I've got it right up in here. This is the original mold here, and as you can see, there's, there's places for wing nuts here and bolts that go through, and we'd tighten them down and pour our resin on top of the cavities. And uh, it was fiberglass resin, sometimes that stuff us not being chemists, sometimes they would cure in two days, sometimes it'd take two hours, sometimes two weeks. But this is what it actually looks like on the inside. And every time we made a shot of them, we'd have to take the mold apart, buff everything out with, with buffing compound, and then, um, and then coat it with wax so that when we made another round, they wouldn't stick. And uh, started making some, some calls. and. Uh, he was on at the time working for W.W. Granger and had a route through Texas and around the Toledo Bend area. And he'd go and take some of these calls along with him on his route to like hardware stores and so on and so forth, and even the sporting goods stores. And, and he had a little fishbowl set up that had a little rubber ducky that he had float in top, on the top in the water. And the sticker on the side of the deal, he had uh, said, blows when wet and we'd hang a duck call over that rubber duck's neck and the call was submerged in the water. So on his weekly rounds, he'd go by and stop at all these stores and pick up what they hadn't sold if they wanted to keep the calls. He'd, he'd have a, a truck full, you know, to replenish and that's how we actually got started. It, is this truly a family business? It truly is. I've got my brother Kelly that works for me here. I've got my wife that works for me now here, and also my son. My first job uh, with the company was taking the parts that we would get in that were injection molded, uh, and it would look like a grid of a model plane. When you would break apart the pieces of a, of a, of a, of a model plane uh, or a car, then you would end up with all different kind of pieces. I have several different parts, and I'm just gonna trim off a little piece of the excess plastic where it breaks out of the mold and this is the sound board or tone board and then this is the reed and the reed will be sandwiched between the tone board and the wedge i got paid uh, the very next job that i had was simply taking boxes like this and folding the boxes uh, and putting the product the call in the in the box and for that, I got a penny a piece for every one of these that I folded and uh, put a call in and folded it up. And otherwise, um, my my all-around hourly pay was two dollars an hour. And so it's not it was, bad, man. It was great. <laughs> it was great. Oh yeah, you know it was kind of hard sometimes. You know, mom would feel sorry for us, and she'd come in with a big old platter of nachos or something like that, and dad come around the corner, <laughs> like, what are y'all doing? Y'all goofing off, get back to work. <laughs> we got orders to fill, you know. <laughs> Action. Action. So Patrick, we're in the, in the packaging room here, and Mr. Ron is taking and putting these calls in dozen boxes. Uh, sometimes they go in, in six boxes and these are then placed out in the warehouse and that's what is uh, pulled out of stock to be shipped all across the world. Is then glued into a barrel and then a blowing barrel is placed on it and this is a blue wing teal call and it sounds like this. I know the story behind that. Yeah. Behind this that this particular call yeah. being invented. Dad was on a hunt with um, a fellow by the name of Bud Falk, and his uncle was a call maker as well. And so Dad liked to hang out with a lot of the different hunters, and, and they talked about calls and different sounds. And it just so happened that uh, Blue Wing Teal flew by, and 
Bud Falk called with his mouth the blue winged teal like this, and he went, tee, 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 tee. Dad decided to take and modify a predator call. And this particular voice, it was one of the voices that we used in the predator call. But he knew that the sound wasn't quite right. But Dad, being a musician and being a tinkerer, he was going to fool with the barrel length and, and changing some things and, and got to playing with it. And at the camp, he, he got a prototype, and it was really close. So they took it out and hunted the next day, and he used that call, and he had some teal turn around and land in the decoys. He knew he had it. What kind of musician? What was his background in music? music? Um, Dad was a saxophone player, and he uh, was stationed here at Barksdale and wanted to play in the Air Force Band, but he couldn't read music. And there was no way that they were going to allow him to be in the Air Force Band not being able to read music. So he did his four years, he got out, worked uh, various sales jobs around here, and at night he played music on the Bossier Strip as a saxophone player. So, and So that there probably was instrumental, no pun intended, in helping him in the, you know, <laughs> oh, his business. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, being able to hear the different sound and pitch and also understand the, the physics behind uh, wind and air uh, reeds, you know, saxophone being a reeded instrument, uh, there, there is your tie between the music that comes out of a saxophone and the music that comes out of these duck calls. Yeah,